makes me cough. It's famous for its upper respiratory infections. <laughs> I am Pastor Eun Hye of Glenview United Methodist Church. My heart is so rejoicing looking around you, and we remember our Lord's resurrection. Every Sunday morning, we celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ's resurrection and celebrate also our life here and anticipating God's guiding light every step of our life, guiding us, giving us a new way of living, and new energy and healing, and we rejoice in God. Please rise as you are able, and you look around your neighbors, this faith community, worshiping community, and pass God's peace. God's peace to you. You can wave, you can bow, you can say hello, but God's peace. It's our sacred moment, we pass God's peace. Please remain standing and we join in the opening prayer. This prayer is written one of our members, Michelle Agripolos. Let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, your presence radiates through the universe, beautiful to behold, and its mystery. We draw upon your energy in the life you have given us so that we too may flourish. And in our ears, we learn the story of your son, Jesus, in order that our life may be complete. Though from a great height, we are invisible from the planet, yet your light reaches us. In the bright of day or the dark of night, you are ever attendant. People of all colors of one in you, much as the vibrant colors of Adam are distinct on one tree, as roots must go deep for leaves to survive that hardy summer, so too much our faith go deep. And when the wind blows us from this forest of life, we trust you will catch us in the next, for thine is the power. Amen. Our opening hymn is hymn number 152.
Good morning, everyone. So these three-day weekends for our kids kind of uh, hit us. I don't see any kiddos in the audience, so in the audience in the congregation. So you guys get to partake in the children's message today. So if I really had planned ahead of time, I would have had um, Tom Hutchins here to do some magic and illusions for us, but um, I didn't. So. Can someone tell me what an illusion is? Yes, that's perfect. Something that appears to be something else, but it's not, right? So I'm gonna pass around, I have a couple pictures here. They're kind of classic illusion pictures. So we can argue about what you see. So I'll, I'll have Greg help pass these around. So the first one is this one, and it'll, it'll be more helpful, I think, if you can see it close up. But anybody, Think they know what they see? Two people looking at each other in the dark. Anybody first see a vase? Yes, okay. We'll have Greg pass those around. Have anyone seen this one before? Where is the nose on the face? I'll pass it around. You can take a look at it. There's two faces. It depends on which nose or where their nose is. And then there's this one. Anybody up close can see what that is? A lake and a, and a couple. Greg claims it's the two of us up at Door County. I said I saw a baby, so <laughs> see what you see there. Sorry, hon, okay. And then the last one I think is most interesting because when you look at it, I'd ask the kids to follow the black dot. Um, when you look at it close and you move your eyes, it looks like black dots are jumping around on this piece of paper. There's no black dots, but have at it. <laughs> see if you can see the black dots. Well, in today's Sunday School lesson, we learn about Simon, who's a bit of an illusion. So. Simon appears to be a really nice guy and he invites somebody over to his house, right? And that guy is Jesus, he invites over to his house. And back in that time and place, and most of you have probably heard this story, we know that it was custom or a good and gracious host would wash the feet of their guests. And so I was gonna have the kids raise their hand. How many kids have washed the feet of people who come to their house for dinner? And yeah, so no one. But I remember as a kid, my job being to collect the coats and go put them on my parents' bed because we didn't have a closet big enough, right? So all the guests' coats. So maybe that's our day's version of washing someone's feet or wiping our feet at the door. Um, but back in that day, that would have been what you did. But we know Simon did not wash Jesus' feet. But a woman who Simon, who was a Pharisee, um, said that was a sinner, did wash Jesus' feet in a way that I think the kids would have thought was very strange with her tears in her hair, right? But that was also okay to do at that time. Um, and Jesus had something to say about that. So that's what the kids are going to learn about today in Sunday school. So you'll have to read the rest of the story in Luke to find out what Jesus says about that. So, but before I go out there to see if any kids are running late today, keep my fingers crossed, let's pray. Dear Lord, please help us to focus on what is important and not be distracted by the illusions in our own lives. Please help us focus on your gifts of grace and love and mercy so that we may also share grace, love, and mercy with those around us every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Today's Old Testament lesson is from Psalm chapter 85, verses 8 through 13. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss. 
one another. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. A New Testament lesson is from Book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. We must no longer be children tossed to and from and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. And now I want to invite you to rise when, you rece when we receive the gospel lesson from Book of John, Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 8. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Thank you, Kathy. I invite you to please bow your heads and join me in prayer. Your holy God, we come to you this Sunday morning to worship you, to be gathered together as the body of Christ, as the church. Lord, we thank you for the gift of the sunlight and the wind that is bringing warmer weather. Lord, we know that these past two winters may have seemed like they just go forever in the midst of our current circumstances, but we know the wind portends for us that warmer weather is coming, that there will be spring, that there is new life. And so we thank you for the gift of new life that you give us through your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. 
Now, do you know this name, Vinko Bogataj? Anybody? You probably don't know his name, Vinko Bogataj, but if you watched TV in this country in the 1970s and 1980s, you likely saw Mr. Bogataj many, many times. Let me rekindle your memory by playing you a short audio clip. of defeat. The human drama of athletic competition. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. Now, if you're like me and you watch that every Saturday afternoon, ABC's Wild World of Sports, you know who I'm talking about. Do you see it in your mind? The agony of defeat? Jim, do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's Jim McKay, but Vinko Bogataj is the ski jumper that wipes out catastrophically at the end of that jump. And he embodied the agony of defeat for many years on that program. You see, Mr. Bogotage was the incarnation of the agony of defeat in that clip that was played over and over again every Saturday. At age 22, representing Yugoslavia in the 1970 World Ski Flying Championships, Mr. Bogotage went racing down the ramp and quickly sensed that the wind and the weather conditions had become dramatically and dangerously dangerous for the ramp. And so he tried to adjust his center of gravity to stop himself from going off the ramp. And instead, he wiped out off the side of the ramp and went flying head over heels into a bunch of people. And he suffered a mild concussion and broke his ankle. That fateful day in March of 1970 started out with bad weather. And the weather got progressively worse. And yet, the competition still went along. And nowadays, as we've seen recently in the Olympics, they postpone events when the weather is too bad. But still, there's always some amount of wind in winter sports. And in ski jumping, there are wind points that, as the case may be, contribute to or detract from your score as a ski jumper. Sometimes the wind pushes the jumper down on their jump so they have wind points added. But sometimes the wind is keeping the jumper aloft longer, so wind points are detracted. Now, two years into the pandemic, I think we've had our fill of canceling and postponing things. And now I think we are simply wanting to get on with life. We adjust to the wind of viruses and the rest that this world has to throw at us and we keep on adjusting to living life. As we heard from Jesus this morning, the wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The Gospel of John is full of double meanings, and here the word for wind is the same Greek word pneuma for spirit. The same word can also mean breath. And there's a parallel word in Hebrew, ruach, which similarly means all three things, wind, breath, and spirit. The comparison between pneuma, wind, blowing where it chooses, and being born of the pneuma, the spirit, may seem odd at first, but one thing immediately jumps out at me. Just like we can't control the wind, and that is very appropriate today, we can't control our own birth. We are at the mercy of both circumstances, 
the blowing of the wind, and the circumstances of our own birth. The context for this conversation is in the nighttime with Nicodemus, who is confused by Jesus' riddle. You must be born again or born anew. And Nicodemus asked, can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? What a stupid question. No, obviously not, Nicodemus. Jesus described what it is like when you are born of the Spirit. You are not in control of the circumstances when you are born of the Spirit. And of course, Jesus had more to say to Nicodemus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the most well-known passage in the Bible. And for centuries, modern people have advocated a simple interpretation of what Jesus meant when he spoke to Nicodemus. We moderns have been trapped for far too long by a singular focus in this passage on the believing part, on the thing that we are in control of, or so we think. We read this passage and we think to ourselves, well, I believe X, Y, and Z doctrines about Jesus as the Son of God or the light of the world or the Savior or whatever the case may be, and that's the most important thing that I believe We have the right stuff rattling around in our heads. But contemporary cognitive science is revealing that we're not really in control of our thoughts as much as we think we are. And so when our doubts and our thoughts get jumbled up with our doctrinal beliefs, which is totally normal, by the way, we moderns think that something is wrong with my faith. But that's not what's going on here in John chapter 3. Jesus was talking to a Pharisee, one of the members of the educated elite. As a Pharisee, Nicodemus knew and believed all sorts of important Jewish ideas and customs and practices. He already had all the right beliefs. But the conversation happened in the dark of night which was commonly associated with spiritual chaos and even blindness. By situating the conversation at night, the author's intent is clear. Nicodemus is in spiritual turmoil. When Nicodemus came to Jesus, he said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Nicodemus focused on the signs. But where did the conversation end? With these words from Jesus, for all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. There are two main things going on here in John chapter 3. First, we are not in control of our originating circumstances, as indicated by the blowing wind and the reference to physical birth. And then second, we are in control of how we adjust to and behave within our circumstances as indicated in the hating or coming into God's light. But you see, there was nothing radically new here for Nicodemus. Nicodemus already knew all this. Jesus was rhetorically reorienting Nicodemus from concerning himself with the things that didn't really matter, the signs and wonders, to the stuff that does matter and that Nicodemus already knew was true. That is, that we should do good 
and not evil. Nicodemus was more concerned with scoring wind points by focusing on the signs than being a spiritual wind pointer, a person who could point others in the right direction and not the wrong direction when the winds of life came howling. The writer of Ephesians spells out a similar message for us using wind again as a metaphor. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro, blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. Now the Greek word for wind here is not pneuma, but it's a word that refers to gale force wind. Metaphorically, when the storms of life get turbulent, don't get twisted around in doctrinal pet pretzels. Similar to Jesus in John chapter 3, with his reference to physical birth, the writer of Ephesians then uses the anatomical metaphor. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up, mature, in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as, it, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. When the pressure is on and the weather is drastic, the finest winter Olympians remain calm and they adjust to the conditions that are beyond their control. We see these ideas and themes play out in a similar story just a few chapters later in John chapter 6. When evening came, there again there's the spiritual chaos. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind and this is the same word in Ephesians chapter 4, a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat. And they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. Do not be afraid. Following Jesus, this is how we can be spiritual wind pointers. By not being afraid. By encouraging others to not be afraid. When the disciples met Jesus on the water, he told them, Do not be afraid. And they immediately reached their destination. Not living in a state of fright gets us to where we need to go. Elsewhere in the scriptures, we read that we are to fear the Lord. So are we to have fear or not have fear, you might ask yourselves. For example, in Psalm 85 we heard, Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him. But this kind of fear means to be Morally reverent. In other words, do good and not evil. So do have fear. Do live your life by doing good and not evil. But do not have fear. That is, do not live your life in a perpetually frightened state. Now, I may sound like I'm downplaying the importance of belief in Christian faith, but that is not the case. I'm trying to demonstrate that solid beliefs follow from fearless and fearful living, as I've described it. As a kid watching that agony of defeat clip so many times, I wondered about that ski jumper guy. What happened to him? And surely he got injured. Was he okay? As I got older, I wondered, 
Well, if he wasn't okay, then why are we showing this clip every Saturday afternoon? That's terrifying. Without any one of us ever knowing his name or his face even, that brief clip made Vinko Bokataj one of the most recognizable people in this country. He was the agony of defeat guy. Mr. Bogotaj did not know the wide breadth of his fame in America when he came here in 1981 to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the wide world of sports. And that big, huge gathering place where they were celebrating the anniversary, he received a prolonged standing ovation by a huge gathering of the most famous athletes of the time. And one of the first people that got in line to get his autograph was arguably the most famous athlete of the time, the greatest, Muhammad Ali. Where did Mr. Bogotaj go after 1970? Well, he did some coaching and he eventually coached a fellow Slovenian to the ski jumping world championship in 1991. But mostly he devoted his life to his wife and their two daughters and to painting landscapes and wood carving to supplement his income working in a factory. Mr. Bogotaj is now an award-winning artist and has exhibited his artwork throughout Europe and the United States. Vinko's friends regularly call him fearless. After he wiped out in that spectacular 1970 thing that we see in the clip, he wanted to get right back up there and jump again. But wiser people prevailed and took him to the hospital. They were wind pointers for Vinko, not to win scorers. Soon after this agony of defeat, Vinko was back at the sport that he loved for a few years. And then for decades to this day, he has painted the majestic mountain landscapes of Slovenia. Through Vinko's artistry, he is a wind pointer to God's handiwork and creation. We heard the psalmist say this morning, faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. What kind of adjustments can you make to living your life with a more fearless or fearful faithfulness that will spring up from the ground? What kind of adjustments can you make to your theology that will trust God more, that righteousness will look down from the sky. For me, over these last two years, one adjustment was cutting the cable cord last year, almost exactly a year ago. I'd gotten into a bad pattern of watching those nightly talking heads on cable news. I cut the cord. In the summer of 2020, I bought some hammocks so I could sit out here in the trees and just read a book and enjoy the wind and the sun and the good weather. And just be with nature. Another adjustment I try to make is that I'm just not going to figure out the deep spiritual truths of life and what it all means. And ironically, that's kind of in itself a kind of deep spiritual truth that I'm just not going to figure it all out. I'm just trying to simply be, to embrace nature, to be silent, to simply live knowing and embracing that it's all temporary. As Michelle wrote, if you could raise your hand, Michelle, thank you for your prayer and your poem. As Michelle wrote in the opening prayer this morning, and when the wind blows us, from the forest of this life. We trust you will catch us in the next. Amen. And I would like to close with Michelle's poem. Look into nature for harmony, 
and vibrant light, find a tree which is strong, upright, and beautiful to behold. It draws upon what is natural and good, so it may flourish each day. It lives through its seasonal cycles and grows with each passing year. It brings forth its leaves in the spring, effortlessly and in profusion. In summer, its green mantle casts shade from the heat and renders peace to the eye. In fall, it is magnificent, its leaves a brilliant array of colors in contrast. Amen. Now it's time for us to pray together, go to God in the attitude of prayer. I want to remind you there are prayer request cards in your pew boxes. Please use them and give us, share with me and church office your prayer concerns and prayer requests. Let us pray together. A God of all creations, through your Son, Jesus Christ, sometimes you lift, up, lift us up, sometimes you put us down to realize truly who we are and who you are. But still, we don't know. We cannot figure out everything, and sometimes we are flying around with the wind of just doctrines. Many people have been telling us, this is true, that's true. But that's not your voice, oh God. And now we ground ourselves in you like a tree deeply put root in the ground. And we move by your wind, deeply thankful for the life, for the wind, for the joy and sorrow of this side of life. And one day you will transplant us to your kingdom eternal life. But now here, we rejoice. We are thankful, and we keep praying to you, O oh God. Make us new every day, every morning, every evening. Give us new energy, new healing, new purpose new vision, and in this sense, in this silent moment, we pray for people who need your healing touch, healing energy, and your newness. We pray for all those people in our hearts in silence. Thank you, God, for this worshiping community, this faith community, Glenview United Methodist Church. And thank you, God, for all churches in the world. Every Sunday morning, people gather together, worship you, bless your name, and receive new life, new energy from you, and become new disciples of Jesus Christ every day. Bless this faith community to be the light of the world, to be the wind of the world. And now with the confidence, we join in the prayer Jesus taught all of us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now please rise as you are able and we sing hymn number 593, Here I am, Lord. joy that we have a new member joining our church and I want to invite the candidate the candidate of a new membership please come up here and everyone please open your hymnal page number 47 Let those persons who are members of other con communion in Christ's holy church and who now desire to enter into the fellowship of this congregation 
present themselves to be received into the membership of the United Methodist Church. Because Lauren is grew up in United Methodist Church, we will do this page 48, the reception into the local congregation, this Glenview United Methodist Church. Though, let those who are members of other congregation of the United Methodist Church and who now desire to enter into the fellowship of this congregation, Glenview United Methodist Church, present Lauren herself to be welcome. And now um, I ask you, oh, where is that vowel? Here, <laughs> on the top, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lauren, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and uphold it by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Thank you. And the whole congregation, brothers and sisters, I commend to your love and care, Lauren Luck, whom we this day receive into the membership of our Glenview United Methodist Church. Do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. We rejoice to recognize you as a member of Christ the Holy Church and bid you welcome to this congregation of the United Methodist Church. With you, we renew our vows to uphold it by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witnesses. With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ. They're surrounded by steadfast love. You may be and conformed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. Amen. Lauren Lark lives in Glenview, grew up in United Methodist Church. She has wife, uh, I'm sorry, husband and one son. They are members of a Catholic Church, but she joins in this our church, Glenview United Methodist Church. Let's welcome her with big hands. I asked her, who do you know in our church? And she said, Sue Schneckenberger. And Sue is here supporting her joining our church. So thank you so much. You are her neighbor, right, Sue? And then she knows some ad other members here. And please keep supporting her, loving her, and surrounding her with your care and love and support. We welcome you, Lauren. And OK. <laughs> Page 49, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you now and evermore. Amen. Thank you, Lorraine. I want to share with you some announcements. Number one, today, right after this worship service in the social hall, there is ASP meeting, ASP mission trip meeting. They will discuss lots of things, and maybe they don't make final decision today, but it is the process of preparing some more ASP mission uh, projects, mission trip and projects. And whoever are the leaders or parents or mission trip uh, workers, whoever involved in ASP, please go to the social hall. And book club, our book club is meeting Tuesday, the day after tomorrow at 7 o'clock in the parlor. And next Sunday is the last Sunday before Ash Wednesday. And it is a big celebration Sunday. Before we move into Lenten season, next Sunday we will have a big celebration here with Mardi Gras 
Mardi Gras style jazz worship music. Please invite your neighbors, family members, and you come with Mardi Gras hat or a mask or whatever you want to put on and we will have a big celebration next Sunday. And after worship service, we will have a chili cook-off. Please make a pot of chili or bring lots of money to support <laughs> AS. It is ASP um, fundraising program. We need your support. And when you leave, there is offering plates in, at the end of the back of the sanctuary. And at home, please go to church website. It is it is good chance to uh, look at our church website again. It is wholly new, very good. And go to church website, and you can give over online. Remember, even when winds blow so strongly, and we don't know where winds come and comes and goes, we are in God's hands and we are on eagle's wings. Let God moves you everywhere, anywhere. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.